All right, fellas, so the towing test has begun. I was trying to get something together where we could pull more weight, but this works out because we're headed to a huge car show today anyway, so I apologize if it's really windy out here. What we've got here is one of those U-Haul auto transport trailers. The listed weight on this thing is 2,260 pounds, and then, of course, I have my Mach 1 on there. It goes around 3,400 pounds, and then we've got some tools and chairs and recovery equipment and that kind of stuff uh, shared between the trunk of the car and the bed of the truck. And we're going to be picking up a few more things before we head out once we go up to town. So I'm trying to get close to 6,000 pounds, like I was telling you guys the other day. And I think that would be a good amount of weight to tow with this truck because that's where the, the uh, I was getting ready to say Sahara, the Overland editions are capped at 6,000. Of course, this is a max tow and the Rubicon is, uh, what, around 7,000 pounds. So this truck is well within its limits, but this will give us a good idea, you know, regardless of which trim level you go with, how is this powertrain going to handle towing a load like this? This is a very common load that a lot of guys would uh, have behind their truck. So we're gonna head out today and see how she does. Now, obviously with a U-Haul trailer, the way the straps work, you have to take the car all the way to the front of the trailer. You may notice that I'm a little bit tongue heavy. I'm still well within my spec though. I've got 765 pounds to work with and I'm still well within that spec. So we're doing good, uh, but it just visually looks a little bit nose heavy and that's just because of the way this trailer works. But I think it'll be fine. We've got surge brakes. We've got everything hooked up good. Uh, we checked all the lights. Everything's working fine. And so here we go. So you can probably hear it screaming. So we're headed out on the road. This is a four lane highway. Speed limit's 55 miles an hour. So. We're going to cruise down through here for another hour or so on our way to Somerset, Kentucky because there's a cool car show going on down there tonight called the Summer Nights Cruise. This month is Mustang Month. That's the theme of the month. And they're going to have the original Bullet Mustang from the movie down here. This is its last public appearance, apparently, before the family who owns it sends it off to auto auction. So we're going to have a good time down here, but for now what we're concerned about is how is this Gladiator handling this load? Well, like I said just a second ago, you could probably hear the engine screaming. It runs 5,500, 6,000 RPM, you know, as it's shifting, you know, up shifting through the gears. But we're at 55 right now in sixth gear, just cruising, and we're going up an incline at the moment, and it's holding 55 just fine. You know, it feels pretty good. Uh, I've had the opportunity to tow a lot of different things with a lot of different trucks in my lifetime. Everything from mid-size trucks, full-size trucks, heavy-duty, dually trucks, uh, heavy equipment, all the way down to the small stuff. So I kinda, you know, it's not my first rodeo. I kinda have a feel for, for towing. And so I'm gonna be unbiased in my opinion here today, but so far, what I've noticed about this load behind the Gladiator is that it's, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's struggling, but you can definitely tell it's there. Um, you know, when you, when you take off from a red light, like I said, it wants to really wind out every gear to get up to speed, but it does get up to speed. And once you get to 55 or 60 or whatever you're going to cruise at, it seems to hold speed pretty well. Um, you know, we've just been up two or three hills right there and it's doing a great job so far. Now this particular trailer has surge brakes on it and it really does help a lot. We've had to make some pretty quick stops at red lights a few times back there in town earlier. And you know, it handled the stop really well. Nothing got squirrely, nothing felt odd. The truck did a really good job of getting the load stopped. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, eventually I'm going to install an electric trailer brake controller in here, but the surge brakes are working well. So braking has been really good and acceleration has been what I expected. 
you know, it's a mid-sized truck. Obviously, you've got a V6 under the hood that's not known for making massive amounts of torque. But if you look at a dyno sheet on this engine, you'll see that the torque that it does make, I mean, it's a really flat torque curve. It starts making torque early, like around 1800 RPM, and it keeps a really flat torque curve for a long time uh, in the power band. So what torque it does make, you know, it's available to you for a long time, which really helps this truck a lot. In fact, right now I'm having to let off the throttle because I accidentally got up around 60 there. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the truck is doing pretty well. Now, one thing I will say is this trailer, the way it's designed, you have to pull the car all the way to the front of the trailer because that's where the straps are for the wheels. Uh, and what that does is it puts a lot of tongue weight on the truck. Now, having a lot of tongue weight is safer than having a lot of tail weight, uh, but it's still not ideal, I guess. Um, so the front end of this truck does feel a little bit lighter. I've noticed that it does feel a little lighter and obviously the rear end is sagging a little more than I expected. So tonight the headlights are probably going to be up in the sky, but there's nothing I can really do about that. Other than, I mean, if you had your own trailer, you could use some, uh, load equalizing bars, you know, would be the proper thing to do. That way you can keep your truck more level. Uh, but we're kind of. You know, we got our hands tied here. It is what it is. We're using the equipment available to us here today. But yeah, I mean, other than the, the handling being a little bit light because of the way that the rear end, you know, we got so much tongue weight on it. Um, but it's, you know, it still feels good though. It doesn't feel squirrely. It doesn't feel like anything is out of sorts. Um, you know, we're just cruising down the highway here, 55 miles an hour, and it's not having any, any problems. You can probably see the car kind of bobbing and weaving a little bit in the wind back there. It's really breezy out here today. I didn't know it was going to be this breezy. Here we go pulling up another pretty good hill. Let's see if it's in fifth gear. Let's see if it can hold fifth. Oh yeah, it's holding fifth gear easy. So when I had the JL Wrangler, we towed about 3,000 pounds with it right before I traded it in for this truck. And of course it had 345 axle gears in it. But right off the bat, I can tell you this truck is towing way better than that Wrangler did. Um, the 410 gears really do make a difference. The extra wheelbase really does make a difference. This thing feels a lot better than the Wrangler did. Um, pretty noticeably so actually. Um, as soon as I hooked this trailer on this morning, before I even had the car loaded on it, I, I noticed that because the trailer by itself is like 2,200 and something pounds, so pretty comparable to what we towed with the Wrangler. As soon as I hooked this trailer on, I was like, whoa, this thing does a much better job holding, you know, handling the weight. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to cruise on down the road here, uh, give you some more thoughts in a little while, but, I mean, the truck is doing pretty well. We're back in, uh, oh my goodness, it's in eighth gear. This is a level section of highway, and it's in eighth gear. Wow, that's impressive. I didn't think it would go to eighth gear. We're at 55 miles an hour in the right lane, cruising down the road here, eighth gear. It's showing that I'm getting about 14 miles per gallon right now. I got the, uh, the instant MPG on the screen. It's showing 14 just cruising down through here. Now, as soon as we hit this incline, it's gonna immediately downshift, but wow, so it does use eighth gear with almost 6,000 pounds behind it. That's pretty impressive, pretty impressive. So we just came up to a red light here, and again, the stop was nice and controlled and smooth, no drama whatsoever. Um, doing really really well i'm going to let you hear the engine wind out when this turns green i'm going to give it about half throttle i'm not going to nail it I'm just going to give it about half throttle let you hear what it sounds like here we go all right we're in second gear that was six thousand rpm 
and that was about 5,000 RPM in third, and now we're at 55. So just to summarize, this truck is actually doing a better job than I expected. Uh, yes, it does take a little time to get up to speed, but you're going to see that with just about any mid-sized truck. So I don't count that as a fault against the Gladiator. And once you get up to speed, it does a really good job of maintaining speed. Um, very impressive. I was surprised that it will still use eighth gear if you get to a flat part on the highway. The braking is good and under control. And uh, now that we're on a, a different road here where the wind is not a crosswind anymore, the, uh, the flightiness and the steering has gone away and it's handling better. So I guess you can just chalk that up to the fact that it's a breezy day, you know, and we had a crosswind back there. So, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all that there is to say about it. It handles well, it stops well, and it goes well. It's a pretty good towing truck. You know, now again, we've got about 6,000 pounds total on this truck right now. And uh, so this is, you know, where you're gonna max out an Overland and it's gonna be getting pretty close to maxing out a Rubicon. Uh, still got a ways to go, but you know, I mean, it's a pretty good load and it's handling it really well. So I'm glad we had the opportunity to come out here today and do this because now I know that there's no reservations about towing something with this truck. This truck is the real deal. It, uh, it'll do what they claim that it'll do. It's handling the load just fine for a mid-sized truck. So if you're gonna buy a Gladiator to tow with, whether it's a large boat or a camper or whatever the case might be, you don't have to worry about it. You know, I think it's gonna be A-OK. -okay. So we'll talk to you guys a little later. I'm gonna get off here and uh, pay more attention to the road now. We're about halfway there. So I'll be back later on, thanks. Well, this thing is it's holding fourth gear up this really long 5% grade. Trans temp is running at 208. Coolant temperature's up to 228, but it had been down around 199, so it's just rising obviously because we're pulling this hill, but wow, impressive. So you probably noticed on that one clip that I showed you, that was the longest and steepest hill that we climbed on this trip. It was about 160 miles round trip. And for the duration of the trip, you know, we were going up, and hill, up the hills, down the hills, had some level spots, and the truck was doing a fantastic job. All the temperatures were in check. The coolant was running around 199. The uh, trans temp was about 200 to 205. Um, everything was looking fantastic. But when we got to that one really long hill, that was probably a five or six percent grade, and it was maybe a couple of miles long. By the time we got to the top of that hill, the coolant temperature was coming up a little bit. I didn't see the gauge, you know, rise, didn't have any lights on the screen or anything like that. It's just that the temperature was coming on up a little bit. So, you know, if you guys out in the Rocky Mountains where you've got hills like that that are miles and miles long, you know, if you're out there towing on a really hot day, you got a big load on this truck, could be an issue, I don't know, um, but for us, didn't have any trouble at all. I mean, the truck did fantastic. I was surprised that it would still use eighth gear. Uh, I was surprised it would hold fourth or fifth going up those really bad hills, and it would uh, hold sixth on your average hills. Uh, got 12 and a half miles per gallon, 160 mile round trip, 6,000 pounds on the truck, 12 and a half miles per gallon. So, uh, as far as frame of reference here, my last truck was a 2013 Ford F 150. It was a Super Crew 50 V8 four-wheel drive. 
that truck had a maximum payload, um, had the towing package and stuff on it, had a max payload of like 1,534 pounds. Max towing on that truck is 7,700 pounds. So this truck, 1,511 payload, 7,650 towing, same specs, same specs. And, you know, being that I've towed with both of those trucks, uh, the same kind of weight, same kind of loads, same kind of roads around here. I can tell you that this truck right here did just as good of a job as my last uh, full-size F-150. In fact, this one probably struggled less overall because it stayed in higher gears, got better fuel economy, handled the load perfectly, didn't have any stress or issues at all, really. I mean, this thing really surprised me. I went into this test honestly being a little bit concerned, but... Man, I just love this truck more now because now I see how capable this thing really is and it will do what they claim it'll do. Now, at the end of the night, my father's car ended up having some mechanical trouble. Uh, he's got a 08 model, a little bit heavier than mine. So we ended up having to put his car on the trailer to haul it home. So we had a little bit more weight on there, probably a little over 6,000 pounds on the way home last night. Uh, the wind had died off, the stars were out. It was like 64 degrees, just a picture perfect night. And this truck was as smooth as a baby's rear end. It was running so smooth down the road with that load on it that my son fell asleep over there in the passenger seat. Um, just really impressive. No drama at all. So, you know, again, just to reiterate, if you're buying a Gladiator or you're looking at buying a Gladiator and you have intentions of towing a big boat, camper, whatever the case might be, uh, I think you're going to be all right as long as you stay within the listed manufacturer specs. Okay, you're not going to go out on the road and tow, you know, 10,000 pounds with this truck. But if you're towing 10,000 pounds, you need a three-quarter ton or a one ton anyway, just to be safe and be comfortable. Um, you know, this is the same kind of thing that you're going to find with any other brand. Same thing you're going to find with a half-ton full-size truck. Everybody calls those half-tons for some reason, as if they've got something that a midsize doesn't but anyway you're going to be just fine and as far as towing goes again i was really really impressed so kudos to jeep give them a round of applause they brought us exactly what we wanted a vehicle that's fully jeep but fully truck so appreciate you guys watching and hopefully we're going to have some more cool stuff coming up pretty soon so that's going to wrap up our towing review sixth grand behind the jeep gladiator and we will talk to you guys Later on, thanks. And there it is, the original bullet Mustang from the movie. The one that Steve McQueen himself drove in the movie. Wow. I would say that there's a good chance this car is gonna bring some huge money when it goes to that Mecham Auto Auction. The cool thing about it is it's in original condition, unrestored.